The devil has loosed weapons of mass destruction on you, your family, and your world. My guest has an urgent word the devil does not want you to know. It's the reason you've been under attack. Enough is enough. This is a game changer. Next. Welcome, 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 Holy Spirit. If you weren't here, I wouldn't want to even be doing this show. For 30 years, when my guest, Isaac Petrie, teaches this revelation, healings and miracles explode. Isaac accepted the Messiah at 18. He heard the voice of God. Tell me about it. At 18, I had gotten into a situation early, and um, a young lady actually got pregnant, decided to have an abortion, and I was relieved because at a young age, what in the world am I going to do? And oh my God. So I was sitting on my couch. Kind how, of, how, just how did that happen? Because at 13, you were called to preach. Well, but I didn't start preaching until I was 21. Okay. So I, oh, I, I, I ran <laughs> from the call uh, okay. until I was 21. I was sitting on the couch and, and I was just like, whew, I'm glad that's over, you know. And the first time in my life, I heard the voice of the Lord. And he said these words to me, son, you've gone too far. He says, have you now moved into the place where you are satisfied with murder? It was the first time I'd ever thought that. And it so reverberated in my spirit. It convicted me immediately. I went from zero conviction to the fear of Almighty God just like that. And at 18, I said, Lord, if you're real, change me. And at that moment, something happened, which I know now I was born again. Tell me about this very strange vision you had of a book. I was praying one night and, you know, we had one of these big old Bibles back in the day, all in tatters. Cover was off, pages were missing, but it was still at the bottom of the bookshelf. And one night I was praying and the Spirit of the Lord spoke to me and said, do you see that Bible? And I said, yes, Lord. He says, you see how pages are missing, chapters are missing, the cover is off of it. He says, from this night forward, I have called you to the Word of God and you will bring back things that have been left out, that have been taken out, and that have no longer been preached. There are certain things I'm going to anoint you to put back in my word that has been taken out. And I received my call to ministry off that vision. What is garden theology? In the book, I started the very first chapter talking about a garden theology because one of the things that he revealed to me is that if I didn't understand Eden, I couldn't understand Calvary. Because everything that happened in that garden is what the cross was about. In Genesis chapter number one, we see God rearranging the earth back into divine order. He calls everything out of the darkness, out of the chaos, and rearranges it back in divine order. And then he says, but I have a problem. I've got this backslidden angel in this realm, and I need somebody that I can put over this realm to make sure that the divine order that I've just rearranged the planet in, it stays in this order. And the answer that God came up with for keeping divine order in the earth was let us make man which means man is about to become the answer for all disorder, Hmm. all demonic activity, and the horror that the enemy had to experience while he watched God go to the dust of the ground, form man from the dust, breathe into his nostrils the breath of life, and he become a living soul. 
and then God say, now he's in my image. He's after my likeness, and now he has my dominion. And those were the things that were lost when Adam ate of that tree. But then on another tree, <laughs> we got back our image, likeness, and dominion. And so the work of the cross is to restore everything that was lost in the garden, which makes me know the reason the enemy hates us is not because of anything religious or not because of anything spiritual. He hates us because we are everything he ever wanted to be. <laughs> we have everything he ever wanted. He wanted to be like God. So he, he keeps us ignorant. Absolutely. And this is why we've got to get the word out that we were created to be his master. And when God created us, he told the enemy, just like you had to obey me in heaven, now you've got to obey him in the earth. And we are the masters of the realm of the spirit. Oh my God, I'm getting excited. <laughs> uh, you teach many things in your book on how to take back your authority that's been stolen. Uh, explain one or two highlights. Well, the Bible declares how salvation is not complete when I just change my spiritual condition. Salvation is not complete also until I get back my spiritual position. So until my condition and position are restored, I'm not walking into the fullness of what Jesus died for me to have. And my position is the authority that comes with us. And so the Bible says that we ought to get a revelation of what is the exceeding greatness of his power, which he worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at the right hand of the Father, far above all principality, power, might, dominion, and every name that is named. Now, that would be good enough if he just did that to Jesus. But then it says in Ephesians 2, 6, and he raised us up together with him and seated us in heavenly places and says, the authority that I possess, I've made you an heir and a joint heir. And so the last dimension that we are moving into in the church is not just death, burial, resurrection, but ascension, because that's when we take our place and be seated in heavenly places and rule in the realm of the spirit like we were created to do. What do you mean by patrol and control heavenly places. We carry the same spiritual rank as Jesus. This is what it means when it says he seated us in heavenly places. It is your spirit that received this rank of authority over all principalities and powers. Now, the reason he did that is because it takes spiritual beings to deal with spiritual beings. And so when we were born again and he gives us this authority, in the realm of the spirit is where this authority is recognized to the degree that in Acts 19, remember Paul's handkerchiefs and aprons, he's casting out devils just by his, the, the handkerchiefs being laid on people. Right. But then Paul would speak and say, in the name of Jesus, he would exercise certain devils. A certain Jewish priest is watching all of this and they say, I believe we got the formula. He's saying, in the name of Jesus, come out. So they thought they could do it because they thought it was a formula. And so they take it upon themselves. This talks about our, how much authority we have in the heavens. And the Bible declares, they say, in the name of Jesus, they come to the demon possessed man and say, come out. And the demon possessed man said, Jesus, I know. <laughs> Paul, I know. But who are you? In other words, you are saying the name, but you're not in the name. You're not authorized to speak, which means if they know Jesus and they know Paul, they know me too. <laughs> and they know 
our authority, which means when we do spiritual warfare, it is not like physical combat. Spiritual warfare is done with authority, not with combat. It is done with words. Our words are our weapons. Tell me about the man who was frozen. Oh, now that was supernatural. As you say, naturally supernatural. <laughs> I was preaching and this man, he had to have some type of mental illness, demonic possession. And I'm up preaching and he just runs off the street and he just busts in the church and starts screaming and coming down the aisle. Before I could even have a thought in my mind, I didn't call for security or ushers. I was standing and preaching and I shouted at the top of my voice, stop right where you at and be still. And the man dropped right in the middle of the aisle and froze. Froze? Froze. And at that moment, I get cocky in the spirit. <laughs> I went right on back to preaching and left him right there in the middle of the aisle froze. <laughs> and I finished my sermon and then he did not move for like the next 20 minutes. Then I called up the elders to bring him forth and we ministered deliverance to him. And I saw the power of God take a man who was out of his mind and put him in his right mind. Mm. Give me one more example of a testimony. I could talk about the demon possessed girl, but, but, but there was a blind lady who came to a conference in Virginia and the spirit of God had been dealing with me about this authority. And he said something to me. He said, tonight, whoever comes to that altar, I don't want you to pray for the sick. He says, I want you to heal the sick. And I said, wait a minute now, Lord, <laughs> how can I heal them? He said, you can't, but I can. He says, I don't want you to pray about the situation. Speak to it. And so I was like getting ready for the service and I was like, okay, Lord. But then there was this one lady who came up. She was weeping because she had a mother with her. And I go down, this is in front of the whole congregation. And I say, what's the matter with you? She said, I brought my mom tonight. I said, what's the matter with you, mom? She said, I'm blind. I cannot see. And the spirit of the Lord spoke to me in my spirit and said, do what I told you. Don't pray for her, speak to her. And he gave me this phrase. If you will release the authority, I'll release the ability. But I need you to release the authority because I've given you the authority. And I stood there in faith trembling because I'm like, oh my God, this better work. <laughs> and I'm standing there and I say, in the authority, authority of Jesus, I speak to your eyes and I command them to be open. And then I laid my hands on her and I said, Spirit of God, I spoke the authority. You released the ability. And I lifted my hands off of her eyes in front of the whole congregation. And I said, tell me what you see. She started weeping and said, I see you. And I brought her up on stage eyes instantly open, but authority did that. See, a lot of situations we're asking God to help us in, and he hears our cry, but he says, I've given you authority, so I need you to bind on earth what I've bound in heaven. And if you'll release the authority, this is a word for somebody in a situation right now today. If you will release the authority in his name, in his authority, he will release the ability. And the Holy Spirit is waiting on you to make an authoritative decree about your situation, and you're going to see it change. Several times, yes. God said, I need you to do your part. I will do mine, but I need you to do your yes. part. Many are not doing 
their part. They don't realize it's a strategic partnership between God and man. If you think you're losing the demonic battle with your spouse or children or health or income or ministry, when we return, Isaac will tell you about the new prophetic season and how to win every battle. We will be right back to It's Supernatural! Satan has declared a total scorched earth war against you, your family, the church, and everything and everyone you love. Don't wait another minute to take back your spiritual authority over the devil. Call or go online at SidRoth.org to get Isaac Petrie's brand new book and companion three CD audio teaching series called Take Back Your Authority, Kingdom Keys to Overthrowing the Powers of Darkness. This CD series is also new and exclusively made for our viewers only. You won't find this anywhere else. Plus, you will also receive his Power Decree card. Take back your authority. All this is yours for a donation of only $35. Shipping and handling is included. Ask for offer number 9924. I have an urgent message concerning this prophetic season that we are in. The devil does not want you to have this inside information. With Isaac Petrie's foundational book and his companion audio CDs that go even deeper, you will realize the enemy no longer has authority over you, but you have authority over the enemy to win your battles. Discover kingdom keys that ward off fears, anxieties, sorrows, lethargy, and any other symptoms of a demonic assault against you. Claim legislative power and authority to break evil plans meant to destroy your identity and prevent your destiny from being fulfilled. Put on your mantle of authority and boldly speak with heaven's power to dethrone Satan from your life and free others from the enemy's influence. And day by day, when you use the 10 spiritually based declarations found on the convenient Take Your Authority Back Decree card, you will take dominion in the natural and supernatural realms and inflict massive damage to the devil's work. Speak words of authority over yourself and be in command of every situation with this anointed for battle decree card. Call or go online at SidRoth.org to get Isaac Petrie's brand new book and companion three CD audio teaching series called Take Back Your Authority, Kingdom Keys to Overthrowing the Powers of Darkness. This CD series is exclusively made for our viewers. You won't find this anywhere else. Plus, you will receive his Power Decree card, Take Back Your Authority. All this is yours for a donation of only $35. Shipping and handling is included. Ask for offer number 9924 or send your check to Sid Roth. It's Supernatural, P.O. Box 39222, Charlotte, North Carolina, 28278. Please specify offer number 9924. We now return to It's Supernatural. Tell me about this new prophetic season and how we are going to start winning every battle. I like that. We have to because... Satan has declared all-out war on this generation. And Matthew chapter number 12 talks about Jesus teaching about when an unclean spirit has gone out of a man, it walketh through dry places seeking rest. After finding no rest, it goes back, says, I will go back to the house from which I came. And he goes and he finds it empty, swept, and put in order, but unoccupied. And he comes back with seven other spirits more wicked than him, and they enter in. And then Jesus says something specific. He says, and so shall it be to this wicked generation. And it dawned on me that he wasn't just talking about what happens to a person. He was talking about what happens to generations. Hmm. That spirits come back in different generations where they find what I call a host generation, which means there are no strong men in that generation to push back against the enemy. And so he waits for a weakened generation in order to come back in. And when you look at this generation, we are dealing not with anything new. We think a lot of these things that we're seeing in the perversion and the deception and the wickedness, 
This is nothing new. These spirits are as old as the book of Genesis. <laughs> They're just new to this generation because somewhere, and we have to get honest, somewhere the enemy has found an opportune time to come back into this nation because of the spiritual weakness. But the reason I wrote this book is because if the generation cast it out the first time and it waited to come back for a generation to re-enter, there's got to be another generation raised up to kick it right back out. And I believe we are going to be that generation. Never before am I seeing people that know their identity, their authority, and know what God has called them to do. And we are about to tell the enemy, not in our generation. We're not going to have it. And the Bible declares, if we will do this, the gates of hell shall not prevail against the church. We are not going to play defense any longer. We are the people who are on the offensive. We're not sitting by waiting to see what the enemy is doing to us to respond and attack. We're going on the offensive and we're taking our families, our cities, our states and nations back. Now, we are in a generation that is going to turn around. Yes. This is the turnaround generation. Yes, it is. Let's start with you, with you watching right now. Repeat this prayer after me, out loud. Mean it to the best of your ability. Dear God. Dear God. Please forgive me for all of my sins. Please forgive me for all of my sins. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I believe your blood. I believe your blood. Has washed them all away. Has washed them all away. And I'm clean before you. And I'm clean before you. Because of the blood of Jesus. Because of the blood of Jesus. And now that I'm clean. And now that I'm clean. Jesus, come and live inside of me. Jesus, come and live inside of me. I make you my Savior. I make you my Savior. And I make you my Lord. And I make you my Lord. Amen. Amen. Glory. There are people watching right now, and they'll read your book, Glory. and they'll learn how to operate in their authority. Yes. Use your authority right now over all sickness on yes. these people. Yes. And while I am praying for you, I need you to speak this over yourself because you are in authority over your own life. And when we come into agreement, we're going to believe the power of God to do what only the miraculous power of God can do. Father, in your name, we come as Peter when he said, silver and gold have I none but such as I have, I give to you in the name, in the authority of Jesus, Yeshua, I command you to be healed. I curse sickness and disease from the top of your head to the soles of your feet, your blood, your organs. I command bones and joints. I command the very healing virtue of God to flow in your body, and I declare you will live and not die. There's a woman watching me. You're in the East, you're up in the East Coast area. Um, I'm not getting the specific state. I want to say you're in Virginia, though. I'm sensing, and you're watching me right now. You've been given a death sentence. You're sitting on the side of the bed right now in a gown. I see you. You're, you're, you're literally going to be watching this program. I see you in the spirit. I want you to know the word of the Lord to you is you will live and not die. Declare that right now out of your mouth and expect to see the salvation of the Lord concerning your health. I also see a young boy that is tormented with demonic spirits in the authority of Jesus' name. I declare you've actually just come back from the doctor of being diagnosed with a psychological disorder. You are set free 
right now in the authority of Jesus' name. Wouldn't have showed it to me if he didn't want us to take authority over it. Release your faith and receive it right now. Your childhood will not be stolen from you. I command the soundness of your mind right now. Many people are being delivered from torment, for God has not given you the spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Oh. Oh.